Hi, I'm Phil Cumming, and today we're at a very misty Ilswood Lake near Solihull. And we're here to do a little bit of feeder fishing with uh, hybrid feeders and method feeders and try and catch a few F1s and maybe anything else that's in this lake. So the hybrid and method tactics are great on these big waters. Just being able to search the peg a little bit better. Obviously, if you're fishing a pole on a lake like this, you're limited to how far you can fish. But with this hybrid and method tactic, the limit is as far as you can cast, really. But being able to search a peg a bit better. So for any, anything from a few metres to as far as you can cast, and left and right of your peg, it just gives you the, that bit more of a chance. You might only need to cast in a certain spot once, just to find one fish and then you can go back to that same spot. Sometimes not clipping up, casting out first cast, then feathering the feeder in, try and catch a fish, then clip up and then return back to that area. So anybody who's unsure about the method feeder and the hybrid feeder, in my right hand here, I have the hybrid feeder. Well, it's got a bit more like a bowl around it. So this was where you'd, you'd compact the, the pellets in or your ground bait, and you put your hook bait on top, and then with another covering, or you just leave your hook bait showing. With the method feeder in my left hand, you can see it's got more like um, bars across the middle, where the bait will like compact around this, these bars and hold on to these. And you're gonna think, what's, what's the two choices? Hybrid and, and the uh, method. For the deeper lakes, um, like we are today, the hybrid comes into its own where it holds onto the bait, bait. With, the, with the sides, it holds onto the pellets. When the, on the impact of the, of the cast and going into the water, it just stops the water getting to the pellet straight away and breaking down real quick. But with the method feeder, the water is getting around the outside of the pellet straight away. So my choice for like, using the method feeder would be shallower water, chucking up against islands. So that, this is where the two come into their own. I like to use like method feeders, depending on anywhere up to like five, six foot of water. Then the hybrid, anything going into the deeper water then. Both of these can be great, even in the shallower water. But on a personal choice, the hybrid comes into its own in these deeper lakes. The hybrid setup couldn't be any simpler really. We've got an elasticated stem, the feeder itself, and a short length of um, 4 inch hook length to size 12 QM1 to a bait spike, and then there's 019 hook length as well. What I must say though is when you go to different venues and or you're trying uh, this type of tactic, check with the uh, venue, just make sure you can use elasticated. Some venues you can't use elasticated feeders, that's to be free running. So that's something you should always check when you go to a new venue or a venue you're not, not, not familiar with really. The reason for the short hook length, when the feeder is loaded and you uh, put your hook bait in the feeder and then maybe put some uh, pellets over the top, when the feeder breaks down you want your hook length to be on top of the feeder or as close to the feeder as you can. So if you had a, a longer hook length for five, six or even longer, this could fall off and move away from the feeder, but with a short hook length you the best, best chance of catching some fish is real close to the feeder. And with the short hook length, when the fish does pick the bait up and goes to move away from the feeder, the feeder will make like a bolt effect and up the fish. So 
So what bike choice today is wafters. And it's a personal preference really to what colour you use, what brand you use. Um, today I've got some oranges, some yellows, some whites. And this can be as well, different venues respond to different baits. Some clear clear venues, whites and yellows can be really good. Um, some coloured venues, some of the dark darker colours can stand out a lot better as well. So with some reds, oranges. Wafters are not just a choice of upbait. There's many other things you can use as well. Maggots, pellets, corn, meat, bread. Different venues, like different colours. I go to a few different venues where pinks can play a big part. Some whites are really good. But one of my favourite baits through the winter months is yellow. And the yellow, depending on the venue, is always a great skimmer bait as well. So even if you're targeting car, them skimmers in match con conditions really can, can add that extra few pounds. So yellow, to me, is one of my favourite baits for the winter. So a pellet choice today for the hybrid feeder is my choice really because we haven't today we haven't I use fishery pellets. My own pellet mix is um, Screttins and Coppins pellets, so I like to use um, around about 70% Screttins pellets and 30% Coppins pellets. The Screttins break down a bit quicker than the Coppins pellets, but also with the Coppins, I always find them a little bit oilier, so these make a look a good blend and the uh, copping pellets are a lot more sticky, so with the 30% and the 70% just gives you that little bind, as you can see squeeze them, stick together and they also break away and fall apart as well so how I like to prepare these pellets I have a little sieve what fits in my, uh, in my bowl I like to fill the bowl full of water fill, there's around about two pints of pellets here and I like to put my pellets inside the sieve and I give them around about two minutes and I'll take them out of the sieve, drain the water off and just let them drain. I normally like to give myself about an hour before uh, I'd like to start fishing. So as soon as I get to my peg, even in match conditions or just when I'm setting up, this, this will be the first thing I'll uh, look to set up. So just before I'm going to cast out, I always give the feed a little quick squeeze. Just make sure the, uh, the pellets are not coming off. Make it slim line as well. There's no point having a great big mould of pellets over, over on the feeder just does it out for the, the casting make it aerodynamic as possible so when I'm going to cast out now you, I'm using a clip if I weren't using a clip you've got to feather it in with your finger trap the line and feather it in the nicer this feeder pops into the water the more chance you've got of catching fish if it, if it boshes into the water there's a great chance your pellets are going to come off the feeder and your feeder is going to hit the bottom with just a single bait and there's very little chance of catching some fish. So this is my technique. So pull, up, pull the feeder out. So I've got around about a two and a half foot drop there. Line around the finger. So I'm looking over the far side there. I'm actually looking at a house. Something that isn't going to be moving anytime soon anyway. So line up with the house over there. Not just the house. I'm looking at the, uh, the door of the house. Um, so pick the feeder up. Cast the feeder out. Feather the feeder in, hit the clip, let the feeder go to the bottom, and I put the rod on the rest. Close the bail arm, just let the line start to sink down. Then I will start to just give it a little bit of attention as the feeder has settled. So the feeder's in now, my trap's set, checking the watch. So now I'm going to give these 15 minutes. So we spoke about baits, feeders, hooks. So you always get that question, where do you normally start on a big lake like today? Do you start short? Do you go all the way to the middle? My well, personal choice, starting the furthest distance never gives you any uh, anywhere to go. So I always like to, to start around about 40, 40 odd metres 
Then I've got something to go out at. As long as you've got the tackle to do this. Um, I'm starting today with an 11 foot rod. Um, and this will go up to around about 60 metres. So my first couple of casts have been at 40 metres. Then I can gradually move out then before I have to pick up um, the bigger rod, the 12 foot, and that will get me that 60 to 70 metres. And if I need to, I'll get a 13 foot rod and that will get me to pass that 70 to probably around about 90 metres. But say if you was, I was to cast at 90 metres to start with, it doesn't give me much more to go. And in match, match conditions, when the peg into the left and the peg to the right, you've only got a narrow channel really, so you've got one line to go at. It's not like in another, if you had a spare peg, you could probably go to your left or to your right. But most of the time, you've just got a narrow channel to fish in. So, timing, timing as well. How long do you leave casting for? Especially in the winter months, I always like to go from anywhere from like 15, 15 minutes to 30 minutes. But this this will, this can also change. If I was chucking in and getting bought after two minutes, I wouldn't be leaving it in for too long. So this is where things will change. So I have um, a watch on my arm, or some people use stopwatches. So myself, I'll always time myself. So I'm looking now, going to cast out. So I'll cast, cast my feeder in, check what time it went in, sit there and be patient. So then I'll start start my first couple of casts off with 15 minutes. See how I get a, see if I get any bites. So if I get an indication within six or seven minutes, I won't go to 15 minutes. I'll only go to around about 10 minutes. So this gives you a bit more time then to start searching your peg a bit better. So you might have two casts, three casts, and you've had a, uh, had a couple of fish within that, that short period of time. Then if the next three or four casts, I'm not getting no signs, then I might move um, a couple of metres out, even 10 metres out. Then again, I'll go back to that timing, 10 minute cast. If I get a few bites in that, in that short period of time. But some days, your bites can come at the latest part, part of that 15 minutes or even that half an hour, or even longer sometimes, depending on the venue. So your average bite time is between, I don't know, say 12 and 15 minutes. You might want to push yourself back to 20 minutes just to give you that bit more chance of catching a fish. So there's the last fish of the session. Um, I caught a few at 50 metres, then in the end I've had to go all the way to 70 metres and a few changes of the up baits and it's revolved in a few uh, lovely size F1s. This one's around about three pound. Lovely looking fish. <laughs>